Having a clear mind goes a long way in helping you to stay focused and concentrate on your single task to make sure that you have results when it comes to this task. And making use of a list is a very important tool that could help you to achieve this. So in today's video, we're going to be looking at seven different types of lists that could help you to stay productive if you use it right. Let's get into this video. I hope you enjoy it. Get a glass of your favorite drink and let's go. Hey fam, how are you doing today? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Sobi Achidme. So here on this channel, we talk about topics, tips and tricks that helps us grow fearlessly to the best versions of ourselves. If you're interested in topics like that, please click the subscribe button so you get notified when we have new videos up. Also, do not forget to share with your friends and family so that we keep growing. So in today's video, we're going to be looking at seven different types of lists that would help you to be a productive person and make sure that when you set your mind to do something, you actually go through with doing it. I have used these seven different types of lists I'm sharing with you. So it's not just something that I just picked out of nowhere. So without further ado, let's get into this. So one thing that we can agree on right from the start of this video is that the mind is very powerful. And so for you to even focus on tasks that you already have planned or lined up for you to do, you need to have a clear mind. If your mind is all jumbled up, you're not able to focus or concentrate on the tasks that we have to do. And so it is important for you to have a clear mind. It is important for your mind to be focused on what exactly you want to do. Unfortunately, sometimes this is very difficult to achieve, not because your mind does not want to focus, but because there are just a lot of things going on in your head. You have a thousand and one items that are just opened up. You have tabs opened up in your head that you have not closed and you want to focus on a particular task. How is this going to happen? So one important tool that would help you to have a clear mind when you have tasks that you have to focus on is the use of lists. Yep. So lists are very powerful because they give you a visual aid of all of the things that you have to do. So if you're using a to-do list, then you can see all of the things that you have to do on that list for that day, week, month, or whenever you have set that list for. So for you to be productive, you have to one, be able to focus on your important task and two, you need to be able to also complete this task. So let's look at these seven lists and how they can help us to be productive, help us to focus on the task and complete the task. So the first type of list I'm going to share with you is your weekly priority list. Your weekly priority list, as in the name, is a list that has all of the top priority tasks that you have to complete in a week. So Saturday to Sunday, or what Saturday to Sunday? Sunday to Saturday, Monday to Sunday, whichever way you look at your week, your weekly priority list has all of the important things that you need to do every week. This is probably going to be the easiest list that you can make because you can literally do this in 10 to 20 minutes. All you have to do is sit down, Think of all of the important things that you have to do that week and then just write them down. It does not have to be organized. It does not have to come in order of priority. It just needs to be stated clearly that these are the things that I must do this week. So it could be, I have to send in a proposal by the end of the week. I have to complete this assignment by the end of the week. I have to start this project by the end of the week. So this list can contain tasks that you know you absolutely must do by a particular day. So this proposal must have been sent out by Wednesday or it just has a block list of what you want to do that week. It could also contain a block item of a task that you absolutely must do by the end of the week. So an example could be, I must finish this article by the end of the week. So how you're going to finish that article, you could talk about later in your to-do list, which I'm going to get into in a few minutes. But what we're saying with your weekly priority list is that all of the important things that must get done this week, you can see it and then you can plan towards getting it done this week. So what's the purpose of having a weekly priority list? It is to help you to get out all of these major tasks or big tasks that you have in your head and remove it from your subconscious to your paper or your digital planner, whichever one you're using, to make sure that you have space to think of all of the other things that you need to think of and focus on tasks when you're working on them. If you have so many things just in your mind about what you need to do, you are not able to focus on what you're doing right now because you're thinking of the other things that you need to focus on. So a weekly priority list helps you to take out all of these big, huge, important tasks from your subconscious mind and put it on paper or a place that you can see it and check it as done. A plus is that you don't have to worry about forgetting any important tasks because it is written down. The next type of list I'm going to talk about is your to-do list. So this is very common. Everybody knows what a to-do list is. It's a running list of all of the many tasks that you have to do. I do mine daily, so I'm going to stick to saying daily. 
So your to-do list has a list of all of the things that you have to do in the day. So your to-do list could be made in a way that suits you or fits you. For example, I like to write mine as a checklist. That way I can take things as done as soon as I get through them. You could also make this list from top priority to list priority or you could do it by the hour. So I want to do this between 10 and 12 o'clock or I want to do this by 7 p.m. and finish it by 10 p.m. So you choose what works for you and stick to that. One thing about using a to-do list is that a lot of people overwhelm themselves with so many tasks because you assume that you want to put down all of the things that you have to do or all of the things that are coming to your mind and you need to do them today. What happens with that is that you become overwhelmed with so many tasks and you probably will not even get through half of these things. So with your to-do list, stick to the number of items that you are able to go through. So I would say work with five to seven. Sometimes seven is a stretch because by the time you're getting to five, you're already exhausted. And when I say five to seven, I mean five to seven important tasks or things that you know you need to do today. So how do you create a to-do list? Basically, all you're going to do is just get a paper or your planner like I would and just write down all of the things that comes to your mind in the morning or the night before that you know you are going to do. So I need to work on this proposal. I need to study. I need to read. I need to um, attend my classes. All of the things that just comes to your mind as things that has to be done on a particular day. Those are the things that needs to go on your to-do list because again, the point of writing all of this down is for us to not forget. But in also keeping this or writing a to-do list, you should know that your to-do list should be manageable. That means you shouldn't see your to-do list and be afraid or you should not see your to-do list and be overwhelmed. You should see it and be excited about the fact that these are the things that you want to do and this is how you're going to get them done. So why are we creating a to-do list? Like we are creating a weekly priority list to not forget things. We are also doing this to make sure that we are able to go through or move through tasks seamlessly and not forget any tasks. So you don't want to get to 9 p.m. and remember that there was a huge assignment that you had to do and you have not done it. So we're doing this because we don't want, want to forget any important task or not important task that needs to be done that day. We also want to be able to be in control of our time and manage our time effectively. I have a video where I talk about to-do list and why it is important. I'm going to have it linked here. So please check it out so that you can see what I mean when I talk about the importance of a to-do list. The next list I'm going to talk about is a project planning list. So as again in the name, this is a list that comes with every project that you're working on. So say for example, you're working on writing a book. Your project planning list is going to have everything that has to do with that project of writing a book. So what's the title of the book? When do you have to come up with the title? When do you have to send the first draft? When do you want to write or work on the book? All of those things are things that need to go in. So basically, a project planning list is a list that has to do with the task that comes with the projects that you're working on. So another example is your project is you want to launch a new business. So a project planning list accompanies the major projects that you're working on by a season or part time. So say, for example, this um, project that you're working on is that you want to launch a business. What is going to be in that list is your research. How often are you going to go and visit wherever it is that you need to visit that this business is launched? Um, what are the products that you need to get? When are you going to get this product? So all of the tiny, minute, important tasks that are goes along with this project, you're going to have them listed in your project planning list because you don't want to miss out a step or you don't want to forget a step. So you could also see it as a way to break down this project into tiny achievable bits. That way you are able to check when you have completed a particular task. So say you're done with research, you can check that as done and then you can move on to the next one, say advertising strategy for this business. So how do you do this? Basically, what you're going to do is think of all of the tasks that accompanies the projects that you're working on, every single part of it. So say again, you're launching a business, you're going to think research strategy, advertising strategy, where we're going to open, when we're going to open, when are we getting inventory, the inventory list and all of that. So all of these important aspects of the business is what is going to be written down in that place. So why are we doing this? We're doing this because we want to be able to manage our time again wisely. We also want to be able to complete this project at the time that we have set. So say you already have a time frame for this project. You want to be able to complete the project by that time frame. 
Another thing that this helps you to do is know what you need to assign to other people and what you need to do by yourself. The next type of list I'm going to talk to you about is your morning or evening routine. So I'm just going to say your daily routine. So this is probably one of my favorite lists ever because once you do it for a particular time, so I do mine for three months, that is it. It's just done. That's what you're working with for the next three months. So your daily routine, as in the name, contains all of the things that you absolutely must do every single day that helps you to be a productive person. So your morning routine would mean all the things that you need to do to make sure that you start your day right. So what are the things, what are the items or what are the tasks that you must do every single day to make sure that when you decide to commit yourself to work, you are actually focused on that. And then your evening routine will contain all of the tasks that would help you to sleep better or sleep early or just have peace when you go to bed so how do you go about this for your morning routine you're going to state out all the things that you know for yourself helps you to be a better person when you wake up what makes you a morning person i know that a lot of people say they are no morning people but there are things that you could do every morning that helps you to get your energy right and just pick you up in the morning to make sure that you can focus on the things that you need to do in the morning. So that could be you need to exercise, you need to read your Bible, you need to get a cup of coffee. And I feel like I've just said all of the things that I need to do every morning. And so those are the things that you're going to have as your morning routine. And then for your evening routine, you're going to have all of the things that helps you to unwind. So I have a video where I talk in detail about this and I'm going to have it linked here again. I'm also going to have it linked in the description bar so that if you miss it here, you can find it in the description bar. So what's the purpose of doing this? Your morning routine helps you to wake up ready for work, get out of bed ready for work and keep you focused. So you know that I have done all of these things because I want to be productive. So I have no choice than to be productive. And then your evening routine helps you to unwind and just go to bed knowing that you're not carrying any work or any task onto the next day. You're ready and you're just going to sleep. The next list I'm going to talk about is your grocery or your shopping list. So you know how you go to the store, you walk into the um, supermarket or the market, you want to buy something or uh, you want to buy a lot of things, whichever one it is that you want to go and get. And then you get into the store and you just walk around aimlessly for hours. And by the time you're even done shopping, by the time you get back home, half of the things that you actually needed to get, you did not get them. And now you have this other half of things that you do not need and they just are there in your house. This is why a grocery and a shopping list is very important. And just as I am talking about this, I should just remind you that when you make a grocery or a shopping list, you should go out with it. So don't make it and leave it on the table. I did this once, that's why I know that it is possible to do. Make sure that you take it along with you when you're going for your shopping. So a grocery or a shopping list has all of the things that you need to get when you decide to go to the store. So say I'm going to, I'm going grocery shopping for the month. I'm making sure that all of the things that I know I need to make sure that I am eating well and I just am okay in the house. I have it written down so that when I go to the store, these are the things that I am going to get. So that is how you are even going to do a grocery list. So why are we doing a grocery list? Because we don't want to come back with a lot of useless things for lack of better word you don't want to come back home and see that you have half of the things that you need and half of the things that you do not need and it's all just there in the house you also do not want to go to the grocery store and be wasting time looking for what is not missing now going with a grocery store doesn't mean that you're not going to still pick up things that you don't need chances are you're going to do that maybe one or two items are just going to call your attention when you go to the store but you're going to reduce how much time you spend because you know exactly what you're looking for. You're also going to reduce how much junk you buy, how much things you do not need that you buy. And finally, you're going to be making sure that your shopping experience is perfect. The next list I'm going to talk to you about is your wish list. So I'm sure you've heard of a wish list before. It basically contains the things that you want, but you don't have things that you want to have, but you don't need right now, but you know you're going to need some time or it just contains things that you just admire things that you yeah things that you just like to have but you don't have it right now one of the reasons why i love a wish list is that when somebody asks me what do i want for my birthday or what i want for christmas i don't have to go thinking of what i want because i already know what i want <laughs> but that aside a wish list also helps you to save towards what you want even if it's not what you need so it could be a splurge kind of thing so say you are saving to get a new phone even if you don't need it right now and so when the money is up to getting your new phone then you're able to get the new phone yeah 
another list i'm going to share with you is your gift ideas list so you already know that i love gifts but what i do not like is getting to a point where i have a friend doing a birthday and i am racking my head on what to get for her or what to get for him at the dying minute i really do not like it so a gift ideas list basically contains the list of gifts or things that you know people around you like and you just note it down because you're working towards celebration so christmas celebration their birthday or just you just want to appreciate them for being good friends so this is a list that contains all of these gift ideas either things that are regular or things that are just specific to them you just have it written down so that when it gets to the point of you needing to get a gift you know what to get for them and you don't have to be racking your brain or looking for a sign where there is no sign so of course all of these lists does not have to be created on the same day or in the same time frame but they are just lists that would help you to be a better productive person and help you to work effectively with your time and see results that you want to see for example your to-do list helps you to be able to go through your day and make sure that you achieve everything that you plan to achieve your weekly priority list also helps you to make sure that at the end of the week you see that everything that you plan to do you have done your wish list is a safe list for you to remember all of the things that you want to have and all of the things that you want people to get for you so all of these lists are very important in helping you to be a better productive person so let me know in the comment section which of these lists do you already use which one are you going to start using and do not forget to share this video with your friends and family if you enjoyed this video i'm sure you're going to enjoy this one where i talk about how to be a productive person thank you so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it please share with your friends and family also do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in the next one till next time bye